The 2021 Finance Bill is profiled at a cabinet meeting chaired by Prime Minister Joseph Jengute. The innovations of the budget orientation and implementation rules with focus on boosting local production are examined. 374 mayors in Cameroon chose the presidents of the United Councils and Cities of the country. Augustin Tamba and Abubakar Bo vying for the post will have to work towards speeding up the decentralization process. And finally, Americans vote in the final day of the U.S. presidential election. Republican incumbent Donald Trump and Democrat Joe Biden race for the soul of the nation for the next four years. Those were the headlines of the 730 News. Thanks for joining us. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. The 2021 Finance Bill of Cameroon is oriented towards the production sector in order to reduce the importation of agricultural products grown locally. The bill was profiled today during the cabinet meeting of the month, presided over by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute through video conferencing. The ministers of finance and of the economy presented the major innovations and the implementation rules of the budgetary outline. Christian Chair Atem has details from the Star Building. The cabinet meeting, counting for the month of October, was a forum for Prime Minister Joseph John Gute and members of cabinet to fine-tune the orientations of the 2021 finance bill. The session examined highlights of the bill as well as innovations. To improve the production of some, uh, of some uh, products as rice, as maize and so on because we are still importing them and we are losing a lot of money. We put an average of 50 billions for this target. One of the innovation of this uh, budget, there is no new tax. The cabinet meeting also dwelled on the 2021 investment budget and strategies to make it more effective. We'll uh, be focused on infrastructure and production sectors. We have to transform our economy. And this is where we believe uh, the wealth creation will take place, where a uh, job will be created. The 2021 investment budget addresses an age-old problem which has hampered the smooth execution of budgets in the past. For uh, 2021, budgets, uh, investment budget will only cover projects which have reached maturity level accepted co in conformity with uh, the uh, decree of the prime minister head of government of uh, 2018. The session also examined latest statistics on the evolution of COVID-19 in Cameroon with the major information being that the recovery rate stands at 96 percent in the country. Prime Minister Joseph Dion has instructed the Minister of Finance to accelerate the completion of the finance bill. We we'll stay at the Star Building where Prime Minister Joseph John Gute has granted audience to a delegation from an Australian company, Fortescue, led by its Chief Executive Officer, Julie Shuttleworth. The delegation came to present their firm, which is a world leader in iron ore and mineral exploitation to the government. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute reassured them of the fact that Cameroon is an attractive market which is open to investors and which works towards the creation of an enabling business environment at all times. And back to the 2021 finance bill that was presented today. The indicators of that bill examined come at a time when the state is faced by the poor execution or the abandonment of state-funded projects. Economics blame the lack of project maturity on flawed feasibility studies and the neglect of competence. Clarice Arita can report that a mastery of costs and the terms of projects are crucial. A mature project is one which is ready to be executed. This implies that all the preliminaries have been cleared and the works ready to go. Contracting officer and contractor, however, regret that, in a number of cases, the cart is oftentimes placed before the horse. Abandoned or poorly executed projects, the non-respect of deadlines are the result. The body that contracts, they come up, they do their studies, and then they come up with, uh, with a quote, I mean, with estimates, if you want, on what the contract should look like before the contract is you know, attributed. 
if the study was wrongly done from the very first place, it would be difficult for such a company to realize you know, the execution of such a, of such a, such a contract. Biased, flawed, or poorly done feasibility studies, giving preference to the lowest offer, are some of the concerns raised. Money, some complain, takes precedence over competence. There should be a unit charged with ensuring that the projects are mature. The contracting officer should not just oversee the procurement process, but especially control the visibility studies that they meet the requirement. Project maturity remains an obstacle to the proper execution of works, economists agree. They nevertheless maintain that this challenge can be overcome if all players do their job properly and objectively. On to one of our top stories, 374 mayors in the country are voting a new president of the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon. They are chosen between two candidates, Augustin Tambe of Yaoundé 7 and Abubakar Abo of Belel, after the third contender, Anthony Digambong of Wum, stepped down. Kilian Dandifon reports on the opening of the election by the Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, Georges Elanga Ubam. Abubaka Abo, mayor of Belel Council in the Adamawa region, and Augustin Tamba, mayor of Yaoundé 7 in the central region, are the two contestants for the post of president of the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon. The third candidate, Anthony Mvo, mayor of Wum from the northwest region, will certainly vote for one of the two after backing out. During the opening ceremony at the Yaoundé Conference Centre this evening, the Minister of Decentralisation and Local Development came with a message and advice. Give the message of the President of the Republic about what is decentralisation. We gave explanations about what is the general code of local councils. We also gave the information on what is going on in the process of decentralization as the head of state is putting it in place. We took advantage to listen to the problems they do have and we gave them some advices on how to renew the executive of their association. Minister George Langa Obam also called on the 374 electors to carry out the exercise with a the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon plays a preponderant role in hastening the decentralization process and in triggering local developments. MERS confirmed that since its creation in 2003, municipal authorities have gained expertise and financial assistance which have imprints on the advancements of their communities. Joyce Kimbi Fuadji reports on how influential the organ has been. Grouping 375 mayors, it's proven to be a veritable accelerator for decentralization and local development. Mayors attest of an easing of conventions with foreign partners, gained expertise and a favorable lobbying ground for development at the local level. The union does be used for lobbying because without this union, I think that is not possible for the Cameroonians or the other mayors to develop their country like they want. And if we want to go to apply for a grant or for something that will be considered seriously. It's an association that can bring development through partnership. Examples of development strides, thanks to the association, is counted. We have built the road, to build the, the wealth, the, to build the, the classroom, to have the bench. With decentralization on a higher gear in Cameroon, the United Councils and Cities of Cameroon will certainly push further the mayors to resolve their social arithmetic, talking and doing fast as concerns local development. On today's topical issue, voting material for the December 6 regional election is being printed at different organs in Yaoundé under the supervision of Elections Cameroon. Officials of some of the printing houses attest that the election material will be ready in under 48 hours and subsequently dispatched to the 58 divisions where votes will be cast. Beatrice Law Samba reports that they are working around the clock. It is almost the end of production of election material. In this printing house, the sound of relief. We are already finished with the traditional ruler. By the end of the day, we will be through with the council, the municipal councillors. The printing company services were solicited a week earlier, a busy one for these hands that count, seal, and pack. 
we have been ordered by ELECAM to produce 34,000 envelopes for the regional coming election. ELECAM staff members are present during the make ready process for detailed checking as typesetting goes on. We have pitched our tent here to see that the initial format is respected, samples of the final product are checked, and the standard packages are intact. A tedious process goes as clockwork here at the National Printing Press, one of many houses chosen for printing electoral material. Simultaneously, Elecam engaged other printing houses for ballot papers, voting material and campaign flyers. As the country continues to mourn the slain pupils of the Mother Francisca International Bilingual Academy in Kumba, the injured hospitalized and health institutions in Boya and Douala have received the head of state's relief package. The Minister of Territorial Administration, Paula Tanganji, visited them on their sick beds and reassured their parents of the state's commitment to take full charge of their medical bills. Ebenezer Akanga traveled for the mission and now reports for the 7.30 News. Out of the 13 children injured in the Kumba school attack, three of them who were in critical conditions and referred to the regional hospital in Boya are still receiving treatment in the medical facility. According to the director of the hospital, their health situation is stabilizing. They came in very bad shape, but we thank God that with the prayers of the nation, we've been able to get them up to standard. So we are hoping that it's going to continue to complete recovery. One other girl whose situation was very bad was rushed to the referral hospital in Douala. She's eating now very well and also walking around. She's fine. She's improving. On his way back from Kumba, where he was dispatched by the head of state to hand assistance to parents of children killed in the attack for burial, the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, met stop of us in the two hospitals. He was happy that their situation is evolving positively. The children are being treated free of charge on instructions of the head of state. The recent barbaric killing of school-going children has been strongly disapproved by Cameroon's bishops attending their 45th plenary assembly today in Yaoundé. The conclave taking place at the National Episcopal Conference saw the clergy examine the works of the seven commissions in the presence of the Apostolic Nuncio to Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea, Monsignor Julio Murat. Constantin Bom has the details. This 45th plenary assembly was first scheduled for April 2020. It is taking place now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Whatever the situation, the bishops have to examine the works of the different commissions of the church. The Episcopal, Episcopal Conference is divided into various commissions. We come together as bishops to listen to what these commissions have been doing during the year. And then we adopt uh, the work that they have done and we apply them to the church in Cameroon general. Evaluating the works of the commissions will help define the path taken by the church in Cameroon. The plenary strongly condemned the recent killings in Kumba. The bishops have always insisted on peace, on dialogue and reconciliation. While we are condemning this uh, barbaric act uh, of killing children in school, we insist that uh, we cannot stop educating our children. The 45th Ordinary Plenary Assembly runs till Friday, November 6, 2020. The representative of the Pope, the Apostolic Nuncio, Julio Murat, was present. Away from religion, the use of the two official languages in Cameroon, English and French, in the publication and dissemination of information in all public entities is being underscored. The chairperson of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism, Peter Mafani Musonge, while on a working visit to the North region, emphasized that it is essential in the consolidation of peace, unity and progress. Wilson Mengale tells us more. It was a forum for the people to state clearly some issues of concern, such as disinformation and hate speech, which do not favor peaceful cohabitation. As noted by the President of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism, Peter Mafani Musonge, such ills must be discouraged. The execution of the presidential instruction that was earlier given to us to go listen to the people, to capture their suggestions and ideas 
on living together in our country. The meeting between the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism was also to review some of the instruments put in place to promote daily the practice of bilingualism and Cameroon's cultural diversity. Proposals made during the meeting that saw the presence of North Governor Jean Abate Idzi will contribute to the building of peace, unity and progress in the region. And now in continuation of our series on culinary art as a factor of national unity and integration, we spotlight eateries who specialize in traditional dishes from the 350 ethnic groups of the country. Away from the usual foreign dishes, many have centered their cuisines on these delicacies that are telling of Cameroon's rich culture in diversity. Ewan Epole tells us how in this report. A blend of cultural norms and traditional dishes give beauty to our unity in diversity. In the nation's capital, Yaoundé, a number of restaurants sell traditional meals and other foods from the 10 regions of Cameroon. I usually cook achu, ero, kati kati, dole, sanga. American people also come and eat achu, ero. So we are not only selling only for English people. These restaurants serve as a meeting point for people from different cultural backgrounds, thereby helping to promote national unity. I always bring my friends here, we eat the two dollar and the rest. They always attend pig meat on the other side also. We want to eat bungo chobi, we eat sangha, we eat cook. So we always live together as one people. One of the things Cameroon is blessed with is food, in particular traditional meals, a factor of promoting living together. Still in culture, short films, long features, web and television series, as well as documentaries are being projected at the Ekranwa Film Festival in Yaoundé. Saving Bango, The Fisherman's Diary, and Antiri. Amongst the production's viewers enjoy as the author's eye recognitions. Emmanuel Avemu reports that out of the 94 films competing, Cameroon features in all nine categories. Film projections light up holes at the Yaoundé Sports Complex as Cameroonians take a date with cinema. Filmmakers in the country have brought it all to the 24th edition of Ecran Noir with productions in all nine categories. There is Seven Bango, directed by Kanya Kwai, The Fisherman Diaries, directed by Enna Scott, and Antere uh, Francois Elon. Uh, those three people are really experiment directors. From short to long features, web and TV series, to documentaries, the Cameroonian mark is visible. We have received uh, a lot of Cameroonian films. We have three movies in uh, international long features. In Africa Central, five Cameroonian movies. The impressive presence of Cameroonian films is said to be attracting film lovers to the festival ground. And so, Saving Bango, The Fisherman's Diary, Antere, The Myth, and many others are positioning themselves to win prizes. In health, a video fibroscope bronchial machine has been offered to the Jamu Hospital in Yaoundé. The gift is from a German non-government organization, Dunk Farmer. The equipment designed to diagnose respiratory and pulmonary issues will help the institution improve on its services. Here's an excerpt of the director of the hospital, Professor Joseph-Marie Ikodo Mendemi. This machine uh, brings a great level of standard in the quality of the care given to the patient here in the Jamo hospital. These machines can help us in two types of diseases. We're talking about uh, firstly the obstructive chronic bronchitis diseases. The machines can help us to teach future doctors, to teach future pneumologists in the genres of obstructive diseases. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice.
Cameroon today counts 523 active cases of the coronavirus. This figure confirms that the virus is still very much around and the population now more than ever needs to stay vigilant and to respect barrier measures. It is imperative that with symptoms of cold and headache, citizens get tested. Baldwin Simon is guest Dr. Joseph Fokam at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center talk on this issue. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kima. Despite the fact that uh, there is, uh, we no longer notice uh, some of these key uh, COVID-19 symptoms on the part of some Cameroonians, they should remember that the coronavirus is still very much present among us, given that as of the 1st of November this year, we have uh, so far recorded uh, 22,103 persons tested positive for the coronavirus in Cameroon. 429 Cameroonians have died of COVID-19, meaning that only in the month of October this year, we had nine additional persons who died of COVID-19 with 21,151 persons who have recovered from the virus and 523 active cases. Tonight with our guest, Dr. Joseph Fokam, he is a virologist. We wish to find out from you, uh, doctor, uh, explain to us, despite the fact that uh, most of these uh, uh, very key COVID-19 symptoms are no longer visible, what exactly happens? Despite the fact that we have 523 active cases in our society. Effectively, but in what we have observed just for the month of October, the number of cases confirmed for COVID-19, the number also of mortality for COVID-19, as well as the number of those who are on critical condition under oxygen have almost doubled as compared to the previous months. So we have to be a bit careful during this period. However, we have also realized that the people coming out for testing who are positive, a majority of, of them appear with either mild or almost no symptom. So one of the reasons might be that the virus actually has lost fitness, and evidence we have from recent uh, studies also shows that the virus might have gained some mutation, and this mutation gives a lower aggressivity of the for the virus to our immune system. So this is possibly one of the major mechanisms. But also we know in Cameroon and in, and in many African countries, most of our patients will never get to the inflammatory phase. And that's why they will show up with very mild symptoms. And they may easily confuse this symptom with other common cold infection. And for this reason, we need to get them tested to avoid, it should in case they are among those high risks, they shouldn't get at a critical stage. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Fokam, for being a guest this evening. The simple message from us this evening is that if you get to discover you have any of these symptoms of COVID-19, simply go and have yourself screened and know your status. By so doing, you help limit the spread of the coronavirus in the country. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks very much, Baldwin Summer, for reminding us that the coronavirus still lingers on in Cameroon. We talk about health still. The Cameroon Association of Medical Doctors, MedCamer, has signed a partnership agreement with Atlantic Assurance for improved health care coverage for doctors and their family members. Mercy Ashud Nyabeu reports on the accord from CRTV Littoral in Douala. They provide quality health services and often exposed to diseases that require huge sums of money to treat. Medical doctors have also been on the front line since the coronavirus pandemic broke out and also deserve insurance coverage. A partnership agreement signed between the president of the Cameroon Association of Medical Doctors, Dr. Ebongen Don Marie Solange, and the director general of Atlantic Assurance, therefore comes as a big relief to doctors who have dedicated their time to saving lives. Appending their signatures to the partnership agreement in the presence of the regional delegate of public health implies that doctors and their family members are fully covered in case of illness. We have a full option insurance. We have the care in hospital, we have the drugs inside, we have all the paraclinical uh, exams x-ray or lab test or whatever, hospitalization is included in it, so it's a full option for all the care when you, you, you are ill. Per year is about um, 60,000, so when you made the, 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 the it's about uh, 6,000 per month. Just how does this insurance package work? It's digital, so during the enrollment, we take your fingerprints 
uh, we take your number, your your information of the ID cards, and then when you are sick, you just move to an hospital and actually you do your fingerprint there. They see your photo, your information, and they take you in charge at a hundred percent. So you just pay thirty thousand zaf per year to benefit. 400,000 ZAF of health coverage at 100%. Atlantic Assurance, on its part, is providing innovative solutions to improve access to health care for the population, beginning with doctors. Today is November 3, and Americans are chosen between incumbent Donald Trump and Joe Biden in the presidential poll. More than 100 million Americans have already cast their votes, and by 5 a.m. tomorrow, Cameroon time, the winner of the poll, dominated by the coronavirus, will be known. Charles Abonne reports on the final day of the United States 2020 presidential election. The United States Capitol, Washington, D.C., voting underway among the roughly 250 million electors in all the 50 states to choose the next president for the next four years. Already more than 100 million people have voted in early elections to also renew part of the 538 United States Congress seats. The most expensive election ever, plus $13 billion, have been spent on the campaign trail, dominated by the country's management of the coronavirus pandemic, which has killed plus 225 million Americans, with plus 9 million others infected. The two key contestants for the office of president, incumbent Donald Trump and Joe Biden, have also clashed on health care, justice, and climate change. Senator, and You're the, by the worst way, you president vice... America has ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let, me, let me just tell you, Joe, I've done more in, in 47 months. The forecast predicts a democratic victory, but forecasters can be as wrong as 1948 and recently 2016. And election day in the United States of America, CRTV's all news channel, CRTV News, will be presented as special broadcast with updates from the U.S. as from 9 p.m. Charles Ebune and Evelyn Owenaisumba will be talking to experts peppered with live reports from Washington, D.C. The program will be at exactly 9 p.m. on channel 306 of the Canal Bouquet. And that ends this edition of the 7th of the notes in which you heard that the 2021 finance bill has been profiled at a cabinet meeting chaired by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute today. At 8.30 p.m., you'll be in the company of Adel Mbala. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing, stay tuned to our program from CRTV. It was my pleasure serving you tonight. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. Info.